Hi, I'm Paul Lichty. I'm the CEO here at Forge Nano. I'm Ruben Sarkar. I'm the Chief Product Officer. So we wanted to speak to you today a little bit about Prometheus, which is our new, new tool that we're offering into the material science space. And maybe Ruben, you can tell us a little bit about some of the features that make this a real game changer when it comes to material science research. Yeah, I think one of the key things that we tried to incorporate into the machine was, um, you know, first it had all of the input from our researchers. It reflects all the features and functions that they want. It has you know, generations of improvements. We've built many, many tools in house, and we took all those things that we like about it and we rolled it into our Prometheus tool. Uh, and two, it provides you some flexibility in terms of the configurability of the tool, how many chemicals you can use, precursors to make different uh, coatings. Uh, and then we've offered uh, essentially the, the most flexibility in the reactor sizing that goes into the tool, from the smallest milligram scale all the way to greater than a kilogram if you want to produce large scale quantities for you know, corporate research partners. Uh, and uh, it gives you that flexibility not to have uh, more than one tool. Well, and then talking about reliability for the system, based on our years and years of experience, we've done some, some really great things in terms of uh, separating your A to B precursors so that uh, your ability to generate clogs within the line or get side reactions that you don't want is reduced. We've developed uh, a very intuitive, easy to use HMI system that interlocks uh, different valves so that you can't uh, create a, a situation where we're going to get lower than uh, expected performance. Uh, we have an integrated mass spec uh, that allows you to monitor the reaction in situ real time uh, and help you set your process parameters uh, for new chemistries, for existing chemistries, uh, and really allows a, a powerful feedback mechanism for designing new coatings uh, and new processes. You know, you know, we've been able to take um, a lot of feedback from customers about what's important uh, and put them into the configurations that we have available. And so this provides you kind of the maximum flexibility to get the highest level of functionality you want at the right price point you want. Uh, and that we think what we have really covers the full range from academic researchers all the way up to you know, high-end corporate uh, research labs and national laboratories. Even the ergonomics uh, have been taken into account when designing this system. Oftentimes you get an ALD system and you have to deal with dangerous chemicals while bending down or installing them under a cabinet. In this situation we brought everything up so it's research height, um, it's very easy to access, and your ability to change out these hazardous materials becomes much safer because you're not put in an awkward position. It's safe, it's ergonomic, you can operate it all night long without having a person standing at the machine. And while it's designed for PhD researchers, it really can be run by a technician or an operator. So it, re it really frees up the time for your researchers to do other things. And then the machine can just run itself uh, and you know, develop your coatings while you are you know, uh, doing other things. I, I truly believe this is the most powerful materials research tool to come into the market in a generation. So this is our fluidized bed reactor. And as you can see, we have a wide range of reactor sizes, so if you need to do milligram scale testing, uh, all the way up to kilogram scale. And for those who aren't familiar, a fluidized bed consists of a porous frit on the bottom as a gas diffuser. It acts to agitate, mix, and reduce your, your reaction diffusion timelines for the materials within the bed. The expansion zone uh, allows that bed to then drop out and the particles to disengage, but still maintain good heat transfer and good mixing. Uh, with Again, more porous uh, filters at the top, which just separate out the gas products. So here you can see the full range of capabilities within the Prometheus system, from small, medium, and large scale reactors. Uh, these systems allow you to uh, test different, different materials that you may only have small quantities of, but also scale those up to a level that's gonna be prototype uh, or early commercialization uh, scale. So our small and medium sized reactors are capable of being loaded and unloaded in a glove box and put onto the system all under inert conditions. That way for a material that has um, a reactivity with moisture or oxygen, you can still put that on the system and coat it without exposing it to some unknown conditions. I'm Stacey Moulton, I'm the Applications Engineer for Business Development here at Forge Nano, and I'm here to introduce you to Prometheus. 
Uh, we're here in our R&D facility in Fort Chano in Louisville, Colorado. Uh, so you might hear a lot of other noise going on. That's because our systems are running. Uh, we are an operational lab. So we deal with many different chemistries and materials. And all of that knowledge that we have learned has gone into the design of our Prometheus system from our scientists and engineers. So this system is purpose-built for particle ALD. And why that's important is particles are very different from wafers. So you don't want to be using a wafer tool to be coating your particles. There are differences in the surface area and the delivery of the precursors, which is what the system is designed to do. So the system is compartmentalized for cleanliness, um, as well as durability and usability by the scientists or engineer in your facility, which is why we we'll built it. So it's compartmentalized into the electrical cabinet, precursor delivery, mass spec, uh, if you purchase that model, as well as where the particles are, the fluidization, and the control system and safety of the system. We have put a lot of effort into the ease of use and the maintainability of the system. We have specialty built valves uh, for us and this system, as well as heater jackets and uh, here heating on the delivery zones to the reactor to make sure that you don't get drop out of the precursor and you maintain that cleanliness, especially if you are changing the chemistries as you uh, try out different things for your applications. So I want to talk to you about some of the different models and what those features include and how those features can benefit you, especially when you're doing particle ALD. The system is specific or particles. Um, however, you can deposit or coat um, non-particles, like high surface area objects, inside of our reactors. So this system was purpose-built for particle ALD in comparison to a wafer system that's built for flat objects. There's many different things that are different uh, about particles and flat wafers. The surface area being one of the major differences. So if you want to uniformly coat every particle and all of that surface area, you need a system that is purpose-built for that application. In wafers, you have only that surface area of the wafer. In particles, you have a porous uh, internal surface area on many of them. They can be up to 100, 200, 500 meters squared per gram. And if you're loading in multiple grams up to a kilogram of material, that's a lot of surface area. So our systems have precursor delivery that enable you to deliver enough precursor into the system to be able to coat all of that material uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Another difference between a wafer tool and our particle tool is that gas flow through the particle bed. If you're using a wafer system with a boat, and you're flowing precursor over the top of that, there's not a lot of reason for that precursor to go down into that bed of particles. In a particle ALD tool, you're flowing the precursor from the bottom of the reactor through the particles, fluidizing them, and ensuring that you get proper mixing and even coating of every single particle. We have a total of five different models of Prometheus, which include different features, so that you can determine which system is best for you. Uh, and to figure that out, you can talk to either John or I to figure out what you're wanting to do and which system matches your needs. So those different uh, features that we're talking about, many of them have to do with the reactor zone. Some of them are the control system, and others are about the precursor delivery. So I will go over each one of those features so you get a little bit more knowledge about what we've done to this system to make it best for your use because it was best for our use. So I'm going to talk to you about some of the features that are included on the five different models of Prometheus. Three of those features have to do with the reactor zone. So within the furnace, we have the reactor. This is where the particles are loaded. This is the expansion zone. So this is the smallest reactor, we have three different sizes. This uh, reactor can get you from the very small mass loading, so milligrams, and then larger reactors can get you up to that kilogram mass loading, so you can even do scale-up of your process in your own facility. 
or we can deal with very small amounts of precious material down to the scale. Another feature in the reactor zone is jet assist. It's not loaded on this reactor, but that jet assist helps with fluidization. If you are dealing with materials that are very cohesive and hard to fluidize and hard to break up those conglomerates and particles. Prometheus system is designed to deal with all types of Geldar class materials. So if you're not just dealing with particles, you can also deal with objects in Prometheus, all along with a larger reactor size, but you can fixture objects or high surface area objects within the reactor um, on the upper part of the zone, the reactor in the expansion zone, so that you can use this Prometheus system for particles or objects if your applications have a wide range of what you're wanting to work with. Prometheus system would be the best option. So that third feature of our reactors is inert handling. It's not available on our largest reactor, but with inert handling, you can close off both sides of the reactor if you're dealing with air sensitive materials. So you will take the reactor, load it your material, close off either end um, in a fume hood, and then take the material, take the reactor back to the Prometheus system, load it, and evacuate both sides. So you never expose your material to air. So another feature of Prometheus is a specialty built control system for operation and safety. It's right up here, called Prometheus. So in your control system, you have heating elements that are all inside and the control of those, you have your temperature and your pressure profiles. Um, this also hooks up to the mass spec. You can build in coding recipes so that you can have overnight operation without attendance. Then there's the safety systems in Prometheus. This will go into an automatic shutdown if you go above your safety level. So again, one of the features on the Prometheus is the mass spec which is very important to be using on particle ALT so that you can ensure that you're doing the chemistry that you think you are and you're getting complete reaction on all of the surface area. Our mass spec is housed up in the top part of the reactor here and it is a feature on some of our models. The computer for that would sit right here. That's not um, shown on this current system. So there are different types of precursors that are used in the different ALD chemistries. Those could be low vapor pressure, medium vapor pressure, and high vapor pressure precursors. Now the delivery of those different precursors or chemistries to the reactor are different. Some of them need heating or carrier gas to get that chemical to the reactor where your surface area lies. The high vapor pressure precursors are like trimethyl alumina. It's a vapor already and it's pretty simple to get it to the reactor. The medium vapor pressure precursors uh, require carrier gas to move that uh, chemical to the reactor. And your low vapor pressure precursors require heating to get to obtain a vapor pressure above that material and the carrier gas to then transfer it, that chemical to the reactor to react with your surface area. So again, for those different precursors, if you need to get that delivery of the chemical to the reactor, we have our bubbler systems where you have your fill port, your dip tube where your carrier gas enters, and then the exit to the reactor zone. So the precursor delivery to the reactor, as I mentioned, requires that you get enough precursor to coat all of the surface area that you put in the reactor. That is one of the biggest differences about our system compared to a wafer tool. We make sure that you're delivering enough of that precursor with our carrier gas and those for the um, bubblers and the different precursors low or high vapor pressure and that delivery of the chemical to the reactor where your particles are to coat all of that surface area uniformly. So Adam's going to help us out on how we actually load the particles and put the reactor onto the system. Thanks Adam. No problem. So Adam is going to remove the current reactor on the system here and then fill our prototype glass reactor with the stainless steel powder. 
then reload that onto the reactor and show us some fluidization. So when we load powder into the reactor, we always measure out the mass of the powder, and we always know what the BET surface area is, so that we know how much total surface area is loaded into the reactor, and how much precursor that we're going to need to deliver. Today we're using the prototype glass reactor so that we can show you what fluidization looks like. This is not a standard reactor sold on Prometheus, but it's used for us to look at how fluidization of our different materials is operating. The top flange that is going onto the reactor here, you can actually see some of the filters that are on top that ensure that we are maintaining the powder stays within the reactor for the deposition. So while removing or reinstalling the reactor, it's important to go in a diagonal pattern as you're um, attaching the reactor. Again, going in that diagonal pattern when you attach your bolts. Here we're showing some rapid fluidization of powder. This is a higher velocity than you would normally use during deposition. And here is the normal fluidization that you would be using to coat material so that you get a nice even distribution of flow. So thank you for joining us today to go over the Prometheus and Particle ALD. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the system and the different models and features that are included on Prometheus and all of the hard work of our scientists and engineers that have gone into building this system. We're very excited to introduce it to you and uh, we look forward to talking to you soon in the future. Okay, so this tool can enable a researcher to develop a new product and then by working with us and our know-how for scalable processing, we can rapidly innovate a whole host of materials uh, that are going to be totally brand new to the marketplace and that are going to solve a number of critical issues uh, currently facing material science. Yeah, we've done very specific work to actually correlate the output of this machine as it scales up into larger and larger machines. Uh, and we think that's something that's very unique to Forge Nano and partnering with Forge Nano. When you acquire a tool like this, you also acquire the partnership uh, and the access to our knowledge in terms of how to take this research and put it into you know, your commercial environment.